Welcome everyone. I'm Dr. Kim Kelso from the Psychology Department and it is my pleasure to introduce Olivia de Herrera and her presentation today at Student Scholar Days. Uh, Olivia took a Theories of Personality class with me one year ago in which students uh, choose a character from a movie and then interpret that character via one of the psychological perspectives that we talk about in class. And this is Olivia's interpretation. Okay. Hi everybody, I'm Olivia De Herrera and I did my presentation over Twilight New Moon. So if you're not familiar with the Twilight series or you just don't know which movie it is, um, right now in the, I guess in the saga, right now she's turning 18. Uh, they have a big birthday party for her, I guess a little, I guess you could say. And uh, Jasper attacks Bella at this birthday party. So Edward decides, you know, I can't be around you, I, I'm going to just hurt you, so I need to leave. So he leaves, and Bella becomes very depressed. Um, Bella and Jacob start spending time together. He's her wolf, werewolf friend. Um, Bella starts doing some thrill-seeking behavior because she knows that when she sees, um, she sees a mirage of Edward every single time she does something thrill-seeking or adrenaline-pumping. Um, so Edward uh, thinks she's dead. So he decides he's going to also kill himself, but in the end, Bella goes and saves him, and they get back together, and they decide, hey, we're going to be vampires together. So I have a quick clip of what's going on in this movie, if you haven't seen it. The Volturi are the closest thing my world has to royalty. They enforce the law. Vampires have laws. You're a human who knows entirely too much about us. They could kill us all. You just don't belong in my world, Bella. I belong with you. This is the last time you'll ever see me. Please just promise me you won't do anything reckless. It's like a huge hole has been punched through my chest. I know what he did to you, but Bella, I would never, ever do that. There's only one way I know to see him. So, you're an adrenaline junkie now? You left you, Bella. He didn't want you anymore. I have to go. He's gonna make a scene. The Voltori will kill him if he reveals himself in the sunlight. No, Edward, don't! I'm scared. and defense mechanisms. So basically the basic points of psychoanalytic theory is that we have the consciousness, unconsciousness, and pre-consciousness. So the unconscious is all the stuff that you're not aware of, you don't know, and you cannot just pull it out at any time. Um, your pre-conscious is stuff you're not aware of right now, but you could pull that information out at any time. For example, you say, oh, where are my keys? I could say, hey, they're in my purse. 
Like I can pull up that information. Or if I asked you when your birthday is, you can just pull up that information and make it conscious. And conscious is everything that is aware um, right now. So the other three parts of psychoanalytic theory are that there are three basic conflicting parts in a person. Uh, there's the id, which is based on the pleasure principle. It's desire without limitations at all. Um, ego is the mediator between society's constraints and the id, which is purely pleasure. And the superego represents society's norms and society's rules. So when looking specifically at Bella, we can see that after Edward breaks up with her, her id completely takes control. She does what she wants, when she wants, and her ego is in no way trying to make her do more appropriate societal behaviors. So we can see these by her uh, behaviors, observable behaviors in the movie. Um, her staying out all night after he breaks up with her. Um, she kind of just lays down on the grass and doesn't really move. And her father becomes very, very worried and decides, you know, we better go look for her. So they send out a search party and they find her. Um, she also sits in her room and she just watches the seasons go by. Um, she doesn't really do much, she just kind of hangs out. Um, she decides, you know, I'm not going to really talk to my friends at school. She ignores them, they invite her to social occasions, but she still ignores them. So we can see um, that the ego, if it takes a lot of energy to control the it, it doesn't have much energy to do any other functions. Um, the normal ego would find socially acceptable behaviors to gratify your it impulses. So for example, um, I guess if I got broken up with, or for any of you who have, you know, you want to find comfort in your friends or in your family, or do volunteer work or join a club, just do something to get your mind off of that person. Uh, you don't want to obsess about them because that's not always a really good thing to do. So also in psychoanalytic theory, um, there's two main motivations. Uh, one is libido, which is the sexual instinct, but it's also the life instinct. So it's not sexual in nature per se, it's just more so the will to live, but it includes sexuality. Um, the antinose is death or aggressive instinct, and again, this is not saying you want to die, but it's the need for you to die and let your body go back into the ground. Um, a person has these energies these um, motivations and our id and ego and superego are all trying to find ways to gratify these uh, motivations. So we can see specifically at Bella, her libido, we see that she desires sexual gratification from Edward specifically. Um, we can see in the movie she's kissing him all throughout the movie until he leaves. Um, and then, you know, she's sharing kisses with Jacob. Um, or touching his abs, which I guess he can't find a shirt, but that's okay. Um, so we see that she has this sexual desire that her id wants. And because she has no ego trying to, you know, make her behavior more socially acceptable, she just does what she wants. Um, her Thantanos behavior we can see as she engages in risky behavior. Usually this um, specific motivation is reflected in anger towards other people. Usually you lash out at other people in anger, but her specifically, she does these risky behaviors because she can see Edward as a mirage. So she is out with her friend one night, going to a movie, and she decides, you know, I see Edward when I see these scary biker dudes, so, you know, I'm just gonna get on one of their motorcycles and go for a ride, even though this guy could potentially kidnap me, but, you know, I wanna do it. So she goes on the bike of a stranger, um, and she sees Edward throughout this whole scene. Um, she also drives the motorcycle without any experience, without any safety gear, and uh, <laughs> without any helmet, which, you know, this, this is all very dangerous things. You don't just get on a motorcycle and decide, I, this is the day I'm gonna learn to ride without any instructions. Um, she also engages in cliff diving, which is dangerous all in itself, and she nearly drowns. But the other dangers with cliff diving as well is there could be reefs or there could be rocks on the place you're jumping. So you do need to know the area before you're going to jump. So some of the dreams that we see, um, there's usually manifest and latent content in dreams. The manifest content is the story, you know, your dream is going on along the line of a storyline. And latent content is usually the symbols we see within the story. Uh, we see in the beginning of this movie in her dreams that she's running through a forest with Edward. 
And then she comes to this place where they like to lay down this field full of blossoms. And she sees her grandmother, so she goes up to talk to her grandmother, and she realizes it's the mirror. And this mirror represents that she is going to age, and he will not age. But because her unconscious is completely seeping into her reality, we don't see symbols so much. We don't see latent content. Our manifest content basically becomes our latent content. We can also look at defense mechanism in psychoanalytic theory. Um, the ego protects your conscious from unacceptable thoughts, behaviors, desires, because you're going to get anxiety when you want to do something, but society says, hey, you can't. So some of the defense mechanisms um, we use, I have some examples here. Uh, so denial, just completely refusing to accept certain facts. You're just like, you know, it didn't happen, you know, I didn't hit that squirrel, it just didn't happen. Um, you could have projection, which you attribute you know, someone, or your unconscious thoughts onto someone else. You know, it's like me telling my friend, you know, maybe you shouldn't eat that piece of cake. It's like, well, maybe I shouldn't eat that piece of cake. Yeah. Um, you can also do regression, which is handling unacceptable impulses by reverting to an earlier stage of development, uh, such as, I guess you could say, every sick person ever. Uh, you know, you just get in your bed and you're like, Mom, bring me soup, bring me a blanket, bring me water, and you're just completely, completely helpless. So this is also another um, defense mechanism. Sublimation uh, is the way that the ego channels threatening unconscious impulses into uh, more acceptable behaviors. So this would be, for example, a football guy who's just big and tough and really maybe has some anger problems, but he's using those to play football and to play football really well. So potentially he gets a scholarship, maybe he goes into the NFL. So he's using these unconscious feelings into making his life better. So uh, this is going to require a little audience interaction. So throughout the movie, we see Bella using defense mechanisms. So I'm going to let you guys tell me which one you think Bella is exhibiting the most if you want to participate. Um, so how many of you think it's sublimation? You want to play? No? Okay, how many of you think it's projection? No? Okay. How many of you think it's regression? Okay, we've got a few hands. All right, we've got a few hands. Okay, how many of you think it's denial? Oh, we've got a lot of hands. I think you could argue for either point. Uh, we deal with more at regression in this movie because her father has to take care of her basically after Edward leaves. He, he consoles her when she's having nightmares, you know, he brings her stuff in bed, and she's pretty much regressing to an, e an earlier stage of life. So, in conclusion, in the theoretical look at Bella's personality, we can see these observable behaviors and find different concepts from psychoanalytic theory. We can look at her in an ego, her libido synthetinous motivation, dream interpretation, and defense mechanisms. And by analyzing these behaviors, we're able to see the thought processes somewhat behind those behaviors. So a summary of the theory. Um, it is the basis of much of psychology today, especially personality psychology. And the field is not just research and theory, it's a better tool to understand yourself and others. Um, it's slightly dated, but it's still very um, applicable in research and it has a very common sense quality about it. We can see psychoanalytic theory, Freud's different ideas all throughout, I guess, our media. We can see it in movies, we can see it in TV shows, we can see it in this cute little cartoon where the guy is saying, I dreamt you were charging me too much, and the little guy behind the chair is saying, you're cured. Okay? This is a very Freudian concept of, hey, let me lay on the couch and tell you all about my dreams, tell you all about my worries, my anxieties, my fears. But we also see this in the media. We see it in movies. Um, we see it, I guess, if you've ever seen Criminal Minds or Psych or even the Big Bang Theory. They have lots of psychology jokes in our media. And this is where it stems from. So I'd like to thank you all for coming today. And I would just like to do a Q&A right now.